Hello Maastricht, welcome to yet another episode of Breaking Mass. My name is Pieter Dan de Graver. And I'm Brittany van Meurs. Today I'm filling in for Erica. Possibly bad news for selfie takers. Yeah, the Citizens' Right organization is worried about a huge amount of stem fees that we're taking during the local elections. They even compared these pictures to previous mafiosi activities in Italy, where people were forced to take a picture of their vote. On the 9th, upcoming Friday, the verdict will be made by the court, and we'll see if we still get to make our stem fees during the European elections. Coming up in our show, an exclusive interview with Martin Schulz during the first European presidential debate. And then we get in touch with our inner thigh and we move on to a new episode of Cheapalicious. And then we go search for pirates during the boat party. R. Last week Maastricht hosted a historic moment, the first European presidential debate. Alex went there to interview some of the leaders of the political parties. And Vladislav went to the SB where the debate was live streamed. Let's roll the tape! Today at the Theatre of the Freitorf, European Commission President candidates have met to discuss their political programmes. The candidates, among which are big names such as Jean-Claude Juncker and Martin Schulz, represent EU political parties. The presidential debate has caused a great deal of initiative for masters advertising with it, but also students organizing in all European member states live streaming events. Let's have a look at the first European presidential debate in masters. I'm standing with Michael Shackleton. He is one of the main organizers with Sophie von Hornacker and also a professor at FASOS. How did you manage to get the European uh, Commission candidates here today to debate? Well, we spent a long time uh, talking with the European political parties and we slowly managed to persuade them that this was something worthwhile to do. It's been incredibly successful. I mean, we've managed to get side events organized in pretty much every country of the European Union. Martin Schultz, um, what was the importance of this event tonight in the context that you are not directly elected? Hmm? In the European Union there are only two countries where you have a presidential election system, France and Cyprus. The 26 other countries have the system that voters vote parliamentarians who vote a government. So this is not a surprising uh, element that the European Union adapts, uh, adapts that uh, system. Do you think the Commission President should actually be directly elected in future? There can never be enough democracy. Democracy is a, like a developing thing. You always need to redefine, develop new instruments. And I think we should move further, for instance, in creating transnational lists so that you have more of a European idea, that you talk more about European issues. I think that would really be the good next step forward. Unfortunately, we didn't manage to put it through the last European Parliament, but we're hoping to have an next go at the next one. Did you find the debate today successful for you as a voter? I think it was very successful because, uh, first of all, it was the first of this kind. And secondly, uh, what I found really good was that we could really see the differences between the candidates. And uh, that's really important um, because it helps making a choice and that's what it's all about when you vote. I think tonight has been a great success of bringing EU citizens and EU politics much closer. Let's have a look at the live streaming event organized by students. It was it tough to, or difficult to organize this kind of event? Um, it was demanding and we had to think about a lot of things, but I would say that we had a really good team and at the end um, it, was, it was really good. It was very balanced, so I think we managed very well. I think a lot of students attended the side event and I think the participation was very high. They were applauding and also showing negative emotions, so I think um, these are all very good signs that they actually liked it. So, uh, Britta, how are you feeling after that debate? Spicy. Oh, well, let's keep the spicy flows going in our newest episode of Cheap Delicious. Where we will discover the Thai cuisine. Four, three, two, uno. <laughs> Welcome to the second episode of Cheapalicious. My name is Lily Kramer and I'm a master's student in Maastricht University. When I was young, I grew up in Thailand and one of my favorite dishes was somtam. I will be making this for you today. The ingredients of somtam are chili paste, honey, fish sauce, and dried shrimp, cashews, limes, and green papaya, and palm sugar, coriander, asparagus beans, chili and tomatoes.
The first step is to peel the green papaya. You cut off the top and then you cut it in half. And then we need to take out the seeds. So now I'm going to grate the green papaya into long, thin slices. After that messy uh, step, we put everything into a bowl. The next step is that we cut up the tomatoes into wedges. Next, we take a few of the asparagus beans and cut them into small 2.5 centimeter increments. Next, we take the dried shrimp and add it to the bowl to get the salty flavor. Next, we cut up a chili pepper. We have to take out the seeds and cut it up into small pieces. And then we put that aside and go on to the limes. It smells like home. <laughs> and then we put them all into the pestle. Add some honey, some fish sauce, the chili paste, the palm sugar. We will grind it. let out all the flavors. Take some of the cashews and put them into the salad bowl. We leave some for the topping. Then we put what we put in our pestle and add it to the bowl. Tomatoes kind of need to be broken, so I'm going to use the pestle just to kind of gently break them. Get the topping, coriander, into small pieces. Then we're gonna cut up the remaining cashew nuts. And add them to the top. Now we just need to mix it a bit, and then we're set. Thank you for watching Cheap Delicious with me. I'm Lily Kramer, and this is my dish. Thai Som Tam. Be sure to tune in next week for the new Cheapalicious dish. Don't you leave us just yet. We still have a report of Party Lovers on a Boat coming up. But first we're going to have a look at the upcoming events. The first event is the Re Festival, starting tomorrow until Sunday. There will be loads of different workshops, ranging from team making to pole dancing, lovely food, yoga sessions, and if that's not enough reason to come, we will be there too, so come and say hi. Lala Clever has got together to give you the party Maastricht Mayhem. It's on the 8th of May and it has a great lineup. So, for more information, scan the code. Talking about amazing stories, Carl McDonald traded a paperclip for a house. Well, he's one of the main speakers at the Maastricht Entrepreneurship Week. When is it? From the 14th until the 16th of May. For more information, you can scan the code. I'm on the boat, I'm on the boat, everybody take a look at that motherfucking boat. And Dutch boat parties, are they better as South African? Way better than South African boat parties, way better. It's so nice, so good party guys, so good! You can't explain with words what this feeling is. How does it feel to be on the boat? Does it feel manly? Absolutely unreal. Titanic flavor all the way. Absolutely fucked. Best man ever. There was enough space on the ice, right? There was enough space. Oh yeah, yeah sure. Pretty much enough. Like, like fucking Kate just had to like fucking move a bit. Oh. I know, right? I know, she's right? A she's a bitch. Like, fuck it. And she's like, I'm so cold, I'm so cold. And he's dying in the water like, oh no, it's like 10,000 million needles. But, well, fuck it, okay. I know, right? You're Captain Jack Sparrow, aren't you? Yeah, I was. <laughs> You. <laughs> you recognize me from the party at Circumflex? I was, I was dressed up as Captain Jack Sparrow, actually. Uh, that was a hit, that was a hit. <laughs> Luckily, not everybody.
everybody got seasick, so people are still trying to sink that boat at the Party Lovers Boat Party. I'm going back in since the captain leaves the last. Oh, that was already the end of the episode. Sadly, we have arrived to that point again. Britta, thank you. You did an awesome job. Thank you for co-hosting with me. It was amazing. Yeah, I always wanted to try out these chairs. I enjoyed it very much. Like and share our episode on Facebook. And see you next week.